what are the most important qualities of the coach? Now, by that I have in my mind... Oh, dear. Is it technical? Is it tactical? Is it organisational? Is it communication? Is it uh, empathy? Is it... What, what in, are the things that are most in, important? Yeah, well, in my job, the way I see it, you've got to be... You've got to be what's required in the moment. <laughs> you know? You've got you've to be able to fit into that moment mm-hmm. and deliver what's required. So empathy is critical, right? Yeah. And how you teach yourself empathy is an interesting one. Um, you can never be in someone else's shoes. You can pretend no. you know, what, but it's really, really hard to yeah. say 100%, I know exactly what that guy's going through. Yeah. But we think we do. We always think we know. We always think we do. And I've learned over time that, you know, a, a coach needs to be confident. Players get their yes. belief system through the coaching group, you know. Yes. Um, but sometimes you're missing things. Because you you got to be confident, you got to act like you know, and so yes. oh, I know what you're going through, and you want to come across as. Mm-hmm. But sometimes that's that isn't empathy. Yeah. You know, I think uh, there's a stuff. Um, Brene Brown uh, does mm-hmm. a text talk on YouTube. Yeah. On vulnerability. Yeah. And she talks about vulnerability as the uh, um, important or critical um, for innovation. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not vulnerable then you're not prepared to take the risk. And he said that, you know, major companies just, they're not prepared for people to be vulnerable or their company to be vulnerable. Yeah. They want the stuff, but they don't want to... And it's never a good sign for people to come across as being vulnerable, yes. right? It comes across as weak and, yes. you know, and so I've been trying to teach athletes that you, there are right times to be vulnerable mm-hmm. and your team, within your team framework, you can be vulnerable because you can be innovative from there. But in that talk, she talked about empathy and said, empathy is, think about it like a big, dark hole. Yeah. And I'm not sure I'm going to get this exactly right. So let's, this is the way I see it. There's mm-hmm. this big, dark hole and you got your friend down in your big, dark hole. There's nothing down there. Mm-hmm. It's just black and it's dumb. And they're yeah. down there and they can't get out. Yeah. And then you're talking to them from up the top, down the hole, going, oh, you know, it looks dark and cold down there. You must be hungry. Here's a blanket. Here's some food. And you throw it all down there. Yeah. And people see that as empathy. Mm -hmm. She said, that's not empathy. Mm -hmm. Empathy is going down in the hole. Yeah. Sitting there with them and going, "Mm, it is dark and cold down here. Yeah. That's empathy. Yeah. And I think it's really, really hard sometimes to know or to actually go through what people are going through. Even right now, we didn't qualify in this Olympic cycle and Mm -hmm. it's devastating. Mm -hmm. But each person's taking it in their own way. Yeah. But a coach needs to be able to find a way or do everything they can to possibly empathise with that because they're going through their own stuff as well. Yeah. And all you can do is start thinking, they're going, feeling like I am and they're going through it. And it's not. People are so different. So empathy and therefore communication and what comes with communication is conflict resolution. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, and, and upskilling yourself on how to be part of that. Because if you don't have a team that has conflict, you don't have a team. Yep. You don't have a high performance team. Mm-hmm. You need to have conflict. You need different ideas. Mm-hmm. But if the strongest personality always gets their ideas across, it's not always best for the team. No. So you got to work a way where people feel comfortable about putting ideas on there and there is some conflict resolution. I, I think... The obvious things in coaching is tactical and technical. If you don't have a tactical and technical background, Mm -hmm. you can still be a great coach, but you need to get someone who's doing that. Yeah. You know? So if you've got unlimited resources financially and you can buy the right people in, then I consider you a great coach. But in my area, we don't have those sort of funds. So I feel like you've got to be at least great at, at those areas. Technical and tactical. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if, and I always think you've got to be working with the players to keep growing it and improving it. Um, So I think sometimes 
if you feel like it's all coming from you, mm-hmm. they'll only be as good as your ideas. So yep. you've got to be able to, a good coach broadens or gets people thinking at least helping the team grow. So yeah. you've got to be a good facilitator. Um, yeah. There's probably a hundred other things that I think are important, but I'm, yeah, not, good, yeah. I'm not good at them.